God damn that event sure does love turning on. I love you two obnoxiously loud. The ventilation system and possibly drainage system. You know, you really do make my day. I when I when I when I'm recording, I just think to myself, it just isn't the same unless random sounds are blasting their way into my ears. Thank you. Hey guys, it's Cugsley, and welcome back to another video. So in the last one, I uh, showcased 173's updates and like how he improved, and uh, I told you that the next video I was going to be making very shortly afterwards, and in that I was going to describe, well, how did I make it happen? And uh, so I have this little setup here. Um, it's actually just in a random scene, I just plopped down the elements. That way I won't risk like accidentally saving something like that ruins it, so instead I have them all separate on a specific scene instead. So what we have here is the main important room that really changes a lot. Uh, we don't need the second microchip that goes here, which is random generation. We just need this one, so that's good. We have 173 and we have the D-class personnel. Um, and one more thing before we start, a cool thing about this is seeing as I recently uploaded or I recently, uh, yeah, like published the SCP Creators Kit for people on Dreams, uh, you guys can watch this now and kind of understand the logic and maybe use this for your own creations. Even if it's not SCP related, you can still use the logic behind it to make something cool, which I find pretty uh, pretty good. So we're gonna start off with, actually let's start off with the easiest one here, which is just the, let's do the room. So right here we have this microchip right in the middle of the room, and this is actually part of the room too, it moves around with the room. So what this does is it's kind of like the room's brain. So right here, oh man, it's a little too, there we go. So right here what you have are a bunch of sensors and a bunch of transmitters. I want to like straighten it. Yay. All right. So it looks pretty confusing at first, but basically it's just a bunch of stuff saying like, well, is 173 and the D-class in the same room and whatnot. And I'm pretty sure I uh, covered this in my how I made SCP, so I'll be pretty brief with what I changed rather than the entire thing in total. So basically what it is, is I added this slight difference here, because originally this tag was just a tag, but now there's a few more things to it. So what we have is a sensor only turns on now if uh, the sensor is visible. Uh, no, the sensor is not visible, because not gay. Um, so basically, uh, the player now has um, a sensor dedicated to, you know, sight, simple, uh, same kind of size, same shape. So, uh, like that, right? Same thing that's right here, I think. Yeah. So, there are a few of views the same. And basically, it's dedicated to seeing if this tag here is visible. Is sensor visible? And the reason being is if yes, right, then it sees it. Sensor is visible. And it turns this off. The reason being is because there's this uh, part of the 173's logic where if he's in this corner here and the player is over here, 173 is typically going to want to follow the player. Problem is there's a wall block him so that he'll run into a wall. So to, uh, so to prevent that, what I did was I made it to where if they're in the same room but 173 can't see the player as in there's something obstructing his view, he'll move to the center of the room. But he will do that um, even if the player sees that line of path, which means the player will watch him move, and that's not what you want. So, um, this center tag, which is what he follows, is only on if the player doesn't see it, right? Now, so there's that. Then there's, okay, well, how about, uh, is 173 in the center? Because you don't want him to bounce back and forth and constantly try to refollow it, uh, when he's actually there. So once he's there, he can stop and he'll turn off the tag and he'll stop moving. And finally, it is, is 173 in the room, because you're not going to have the tag on if it's not in the room, right? So all those go together right into here and activate this sensor tag. That's it. So that just kind of establishes, okay, how does it work? And uh, the door logic uh, remains the same. And if I didn't mention this in my previous video, please let me know, because I think I'm pretty sure I did explain all, how all this works in a pretty brief way. But if I didn't and I'm having a false memory, uh, do tell because I don't want to leave you guys in the dark on anything. Or, um, if you, yeah, if I did, like, forget to cover it, but it takes a while to make a video, then uh, this room is also available for you guys to kind of, like, you know, put your own scenes and pick apart and see how this works and that, that how that works, which is pretty cool. 
Um, I'm considering uploading the D-Class character to my creator's kit, but I kind of want to wait till it's more developed first. So there's a wrap. Alright, so now on to 173. So with 173, uh, there's a few pieces here. So right here you have the pre-recorded positions, which was what it originally uh, served to be, but it's changed in a while. I just forgot to rename it. So basically now what this does is this stops him from you know sliding or doing anything like that. It basically stops him from moving. And it's pretty self-explanatory. So right here you have, well, can he move? Um, if he can move, then we're going to turn this off because that's his stopping mechanism. If he can't move, then that'll turn on, right? And I have to remember where that wire comes from. Comes from the knot gate, which is in here, which then comes from these. So yeah, um, with these, right? Um, one thing that you'll possibly notice, or maybe it's just me, when you're making something like this, is you'll know what you're doing in the time, and then you'll kind of forget it. Not really forget, but you'll have a general idea afterwards. You're not going to remember every single detail. Kind of the same thing with uh, if I went into here and looked at. Uh, 650s logic like this is a mess I've tried organizing it like I think I mentioned before but it is a monstrosity so I knew what I was doing at the time but not not, not anymore I know what it does I don't know how it doesn't oh I know a basic idea of how it doesn't but it just got so over convoluted so same thing with this so again I'll explain the basics and I'll give you all, I'll give all you guys like the important information so you guys can use it for your own levels I won't go into the super nitty-gritty because in doing that, it would probably confuse both you and me way more than it needs to. So we're going to start off with uh, the two microchips. So this used to be in its own microchip, but now it's not. So what you have here, and actually I'll label them while I'm talking. Uh, this one is a door microchip. So this one goes towards doors that are in between the player and the SD1. So this one here is a sensor microchip. This one goes towards the sensor of the room when it knows that the player is out of sight but in the same room. So we're gonna do the door. Actually, let's do this one here first. This one is just follow the player. So right here you have this OR gate. And this is important because this is how it sees, all right? So it has a laser scope going for D-class char. Then it has a bunch of other ones, all of these pointing towards D-class char. If you're on different sides of his body, that way if he's turned around, it can still kind of see him. Technically, you, you wouldn't have that, but I have this in a for the reason that it knows a, like a wall isn't there. So it's not for realistic sight as it is for navigation and not you know hitting random walls. Because that would be pretty bad and it's, it goes fast enough to where it would probably go through the wall. So you want to try to avoid that. So that's what that does, that's his sight, basically. Now from his sight, let's just move it over here. Let's just grab this and move it over here as well. Let's like try to separate those. So from his sight you see that it's going a lot of different places. So we're going to start off with kind of what this is up here. Um, and this is important because it, it it does this weird thing. It's his memory. So when I in my last video, I mentioned how it can forget. Well, this is how it does it. So basically what happens is if it senses you, it'll turn on this counter, right? And what happens is once this counter is on, this is his memory span right here. It's 30 seconds long. And uh, once this counter starts, this... Uh, timer will start and once it hits um, once it hits 30 it will reset this and it'll turn this off this is going after the door remember so if it doesn't remember that you're here it's not going to go after the room it thinks you're in right that's how it works and basically for constantly if it can constantly see you it refreshes so what it would I right, look you moved to the center so yeah that's what it does it's basically just his memory system now let's move this over here and separate that because I don't want to have all that cluster there, right? It's going to make it more difficult. And this here is basically the same thing for his memory, only this serves for the center of the room. So again, we're going to move this over here and try to keep it all kind of neater. So now what we have is the main follow the character logic, and then you have, I think it's door. Yeah, door. So here's how this works. First, if it can see the character, it's going to go after him, right? Now what you have here is, well, is 173 visible. And then you have, well, 173 can't move. Those are two different things. Because um, I wanted to specify the difference because it got kind of iffy. At some points it would say, well, he's visible, but there's nothing saying he can't move. And so he would drift. So I solved that by doing both. So if he, if he is not visible, right, on, 
And if you can move, right, or if he can't move, but that's not on, not the inverts it. So therefore, he can move. That's why all three of those are on. That's why he moves. Because one of these, if you notice, not all of these are on, right? Not all the laser scopes are on, but some of them are, which means they can see them. So it'll move to the center of the room. Now, here's where we are. So we have that, all the parameters are on for him to move. So now we have a few things going on here that's finished. So first we're gonna go into this, and we have this knock gate. Now what this does is it says, well, is 173 and D class in the same room? And if they are, and let's go to that. Okay, cool. And if it has memory that he exists, right? Then we're gonna turn this on. And now if this is on, it's not gonna to wanna to go after the player per se. It, it's kind of confusing. Actually, I'm a little, little uh, confuddled too. Because if we're looking at this, typically you wouldn't expect it to do that. It would have to work in conjunction. Wait, depends where that knock gate go to. Knock gate goes there. All right. Yeah. So that's a little. So that seems a bit unnecessary. But I won't judge too hard on that. I mean, I can understand it because it's basically saying, well, don't follow it if it's not the same. That's something I might want to try fixing because that could definitely use some work. So we're going to ignore that for now because I don't know what I was thinking when I put that in there. But okay. So if we're in the same room or if we're not in the same room, hold on a moment. I'm sorry. You know, we're going to cut to what I understand what I'm looking at here. So uh, see you guys in a few seconds. All right, guys. So I'm back and uh, I looked at it for a little bit and I'm not quite seeing how that's necessary. It doesn't seem like it's actually useful for that AND gate there because it shouldn't, basically what it's saying is if they're in the same room and it sees you, then don't follow the character. And that seems kind of counterintuitive, but I'm not quite, I'm not quite catching it. So it doesn't seem to cause any adverse effects because of the way it's wired but it doesn't seem to be doing anything for it either. So we're gonna, it does do something useful, mainly for this piece, right? That's why it's there. I just don't know why I connected it to that AND gate. But we're gonna, ask, we're gonna continue past that because that needs to be reviewed. So what that happens is, right? If all the parameters, except for this one, are set, then it's gonna start this timer here. And this timer just goes on, right? And then it follows the character until it reaches it and then it kills him. Right, and that's that's basically it. Once a character senses 173 is in a certain range and it senses that it can't see the 173, you die. So that's pretty self explanatory, except for that wire. And now we're gonna go to let's do let's do door. That's like one of the easier ones. Um so we have door here, right? And this input again is from the memory. So don't worry about that. We already covered it. So now what we have is well is door active. Now, in my other video where I talked about this, where I think I talked about this, right? Um, if there was a character in here and there was a character in here, right? Or there's 173 here and a, I don't know, the character there, then there's a communication going between both of the rooms saying, well, this is the area where there's a barrier, right? That can be opened. So that's where the door is. And what's gonna happen is, it's gonna send a bunch of signals saying, well, this door is active, right? And there it is right there. So, when you go over here, it's going to sense, well, there's a door active. Okay, that's a good start. So now we have two things on, and, uh, assuming that 173 already saw the character. We have door active, and it knows it's there. So then, what you have is, well, okay, cool. Then you have this smaller door active here, which basically says, well, is he already there? If he's already at the door active spot, then he doesn't need to follow it. It's the same rule with uh, the center area, right? because you don't want to zoom around the kind of tag constantly. So it stops. It's a precautionary measure to stop it from, you know, constantly shaking about. All right, so if all those are on, what's going to happen is it's just going to activate those. As well as, correct, it, oh, I'm going to zoom in on it. As well, as that should be one of the parameters to, that's like stuck on what, let me, there we go. So that should be one of the parameters that also allows it to move. If 
I'm correct. Let's, let's follow the wire here. Because if I'm correct, I set that into a node, put that up, and right into the movement. So basically, what this wire does, uh, what this one here does, is it also makes it to where the uh, 173 statue is able to move. And it goes into that, and it goes into this AND gate here, and we'll get into the recorded positions again shortly after. So, there we go. And this down here is door opening, and basically that sets a small delay for when it can and can't move. Uh, uh, otherwise, it would shoot through the door at the first chance it gets. So this kind of, I have a sensor saying, well, it's door opening. If so, don't let it move. It goes into this AND gate, and it goes in the center, yet again, almost seems like one of the wires that doesn't need to exist. Actually, no, it's going to a transmitter. Why is it in here? That's the dumbest thing. Why is... I mean, I guess it's because it's connected to the timer, but that just seems like... Alright. That's confusing. I put this uh, transmitter in a tag that has nothing to... almost nothing to do with this. That's just some bad placement. But either way, though, that's how that works. Right, so that's the door, and then the center one is almost the same. It's slightly different. We're going to go back to this now. We already explained this. We'll have to in the same room, and again, if it is not up, I'm sorry. You want to tell me, turn off if that doesn't make it wants to. Okay, again, it works, but it seems really, really arbitrary. Because it's asking for two of the exact same inputs on two different polarities. So, yeah, this typically happens when I update something and I go in the process of cleaning it up. And actually, that's like a big benefit of recording videos because then I realize, like, hey, you know what? I made a mistake. Because when you explain something, typically you're saying it out loud and then you realize, wait, that doesn't quite make sense. Kind of like how it's looking for an output from this, saying that it remembers and it currently sees, but then it's going to invert that, so if those are on, oh, if it currently sees, there it is, okay, that one, I don't quite get it, but you know what, that's the important one, alright, so, that makes sense, because remember, the sensor is when, the char when it can't see the character, so I don't quite know why I connected this, but, alright, I guess, uh, that doesn't seem like it's necessary, but this one definitely is because that one, why go to the center of the room if it has a direct line, like a direct shot? Okay, so going from that, if, if all this works, right, it's going to go into this AND gate here saying, all right, that's one parameter is met. It needs to go to the center next, right? Does it sense the center? Because remember, the center, it's a universal thing. It used to not be. Um, so if the center is on, right, then it will go after it. But if the center isn't on because it doesn't sense both players and whatnot, then, well, if it doesn't sense 173 or center visible or 173 in that kind of small area, then, well, yeah, don't don't have it on. So if center is on, then, well, that's another parameter met. And the final parameter is, well, does it have memory of the player being there? Because if it doesn't have memory, why is it going to arbitrarily go to the center of the room? Uh, I might add that in a bit like in the later update, uh, random movements when it doesn't think the player is there to make it seem more realistic. But as of right now, it's not needed, and it has a, that would add a lot of glitches to the game, even more than there already are. And that's it. That's all. That's the most complicated part right there. Already finished. We're we're done with it. And I need to do some reviewing on that. So next, we have two more microchips. Um, I will go into a little more depth on how that works, just barely, and you know what this does. So basically, correct that is that's a gyroscope, yeah, and that should connect. It seems to be an is that a NOT gate or an OR gate? That's an OR gate. All right. So looking at this, all right. So saying if any of these are on, right? If the door or if the sensor or if this is on, at least it should point to that from somewhere, yep, or if that's on, it's going to activate this OR gate and activate this gyroscope, which makes sense, it keeps it upright while it's moving, at kind of a low velocity though, you'd expect it to, eh, whatever, and then this NOT gate turns off, and that NOT gate goes into here, which, if I'm correct, just turns off the stopping mechanism, 
So exactly how the stopping mechanism works, because it's important, is, and this is necessary too, it's kind of a weird fix, but it definitely helps. Basically, when it's time, when it's time to stop, right, when the knot gets on and when it says 173 cannot move anymore, it's going to activate uh, these two timers here, as well as this knot gate, which just goes to 173 and, you know, stops them from moving, right? It's going to go here, and this timer is going to go to point 0.1, and it's going to go down. So it's going to be on for just a split second, and it's going to activate this action recorder, and all the action recorder does is just move them just ever so slightly. And the reason for that is it's a great way to get them to stop moving, because then it stops the movement to move them just like a pixel to the left. I didn't really care which direction I moved him, as long as it wasn't down or up. That way, he, that way there's no chance he'd be uh, floating. Because of this, that is. There's a one well, that's where he goes to the center. He's like a foot above the ground. I'm trying to figure that out. Um, so that just stops him from moving instantaneously. And this, in that small span where, you know, he's, re he's fixing himself. And the player's eyes are still closed at this point. Remember, because he stops moving just a split second before the character opens his eyes. And that's not determined in here, it's actually determined in uh, the player. So, and this here does the exact same thing. That's at point 0.1, and this is actually at point 0.4. So it has point 0.4 seconds to fix its alignment. And that's what that gyroscope is for. So that's it. That's all of 173. Um, pretty sure I explained that. I explained that. Yeah, and then this here is basically just a measure. I think I explained this. I, this, is like, this is my second take. So I don't know, I'm pretty sure I explained it, but just in case, basically, this makes sure that the map knows for certain that 173 is in this map, and he has spawned. That way there's not two of them. Okay, that's it. So we're done with that. We know how the room works and how 173 works, and the only thing I really changed in here, the only like substantial thing I changed, should be a blinking mechanic if I'm smart and I put it in the right area. I go blinking mechanic, go here. Okie dokie, yep. So there's a slight difference now, right, where you see all these confusing wires and shit going all over the place, right? Well, here's the wiper, right? So when you blink, it activates this uh, counter, and it activates this counter to reset it. And it resets at 0.5 seconds, so your eyes are closed for half a second. And in that time, right, this also activates this timer here, which goes down, and it's 0.4 seconds long. And what that does is it determines blink block. <laughs> blink block. Um, and that's, see if you guys can get that reference. Um, and so basically what this says is it says, hey, my eyes are closed. But it says my eyes are closed for 0.4 out of 0.5. So at that last point second, 173 thinks you can already see it. And that's what stops it. That's what, it, it stops prematurely. And that's what stops it from looking like it's still rushing at you when you open your eyes because it's already stopping before your eyes open and that's that's the most important part and i'm pretty sure i mentioned this but if i didn't the rest of it's like hold circle also activates blink blank um this one here press circle just activates this counter which is the same thing uh this is actually the blink meter which is why there's a second one right here this is the blink meter logic and then finally we have here is we have this not gate which, let's see where that heads, goes into the secondary microchip. Ah, and that just uh, stops this from turning on if I'm correct. Basically making the blink meter disappear, like you're actually blinking, because you can't see anything. And then this here is just the wiper, which, um, you know, makes your screen go black for ever so long. And that's it, we're done with the video. It only took a long ass time, but that's it. So, I hope you guys understood everything. Um, Hell, there were some things that even I was a little confused by, like that damn wire. Uh, um, so if you guys have any questions, uh, please let me know and I'll elaborate on it. And remember, this character here is free for all of you guys to use. So you can go in and make your own thing. It's one sculpture, so you don't have to worry about moving joints or anything like that. It originally had moving joints, as you can see in the uh, intro level, or the intro scene where he attacked the, the D-Class. Problem was, it proved a problem with rotation, because then he would rotate on like this huge circle rather than at a point. So I had to get rid of the moving joints for that, which kind of sucked. It really added to the horror, I think, because if he like reached for you, it's like, oh god. But 
yeah, so all you gotta do is just go in here and kind of like change the sculpture to whatever you feel like you want it to be. And you can tell, you can just keep the logic. Um, some of it does correspond to D-Class, and I, right now I will focus the rest of this video right now uh, showing you what you would have to change. So, you don't need to change these, just add these into your character and make, you know, a line of sight and all that stuff. Um, let's see here, let me just like try finding something. I don't think there's any D-Class specific stuff. All right. So you may need to change that if you don't want to name your character D-Class. That's just saying 173 and character in the same room. Then you're going to have to change these here, which are basically looking for the player. You can name your player whatever you want, and then you put these here that name it. Whoa, what? That's cool. Um, I don't know. What was that? It's like, that was weird. Like my camera fixed itself in like a really nice looking way. Um... And I think aside from the laser scopes, that's actually about it when it comes to D-Class. So there's not much you have to change. Um, just be mindful of all the sensors and how those would have to relate. Uh, now, you do require uh, some knowledge as well as to how the rooms might work. Again, you can take this chip from my room and put it in yours and it'll instantly work as long as you have these side chips here because these are the door chips, right? And each room is going to have to have those if you want it to work. And you're going to have to place this chip in the center of the room every time. Otherwise, there's going to be a problem. Or at least in a part of the room that has no obstructions. And in here, again, change that to your character's name. Those are good. I would change uh, that to your character's name. Uh, D-Class from Active is just saying D-Class is in this room. Which means that this here is looking for the D-Class. So you would want to change that to your character's name as well. Um, these here can stay the same because that's already programmed in there. You don't have to change the names. You can, I, I suggest you do because it will make it neater and that way you'll know what it is specifically. And that's it for that. And finally over here in this microchip, what you have are just a bunch of sensors. So again, change that name to, uh, well, actually when you change that chip over here to, from D classroom active to playroom active, it's going to change this too. So that's good. You want to change that, you're going to change D-Class door active to just player door active, whatever you want to name it. Then player door active, again, that's going to go here. You're going to want to change that to once when and player in the same room. You're going to do, uh, I think that's it. Yeah. So there you go. That's all the stuff you need to change. Uh, all the stuff that you need to change the names for. And the reason I would say you change the names for that is because it's going to be very different when you don't have this character. Now... Uh, you don't require this character for uh, the setup where, with the statue in the room because the character doesn't add anything directly to it. Just add in a tag and then you're good, right? Because it's already looking for all the stuff. It has everything packed in here. So that's good to go. And that's it. So I'm finally finished. I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Again, any questions, let me know. Completely remixable, so use this for whatever you want. And I will see you guys in the next video. So, bye-bye.